What's up guys, welcome back to a new video. Finally the start of a new build, something I've been talking about for a long time. But today we're finally going to be starting on the Barra VS project. So this is something I've been talking about for ages. It was meant to happen a long time ago. So long time coming today. So today's mission is going to be, or this weekend's mission I should say, it's going to be to remove the BTR and the Barra from the Falcon. And so I have it out for the rest of the week to try and get it sort of ready and tinker with it, see what I need to replace, what's leaking, this and that, get our conversion bits on it, cover more of that as we go. So for now, I'm gonna get the Falcon in here and pull this thing out, and well, first thing I'm gonna do is degrease it, so we'll go do that first, but hopefully it starts. All right, first things first, gotta get the thing started. Hopefully it starts, it has been sitting for quite some time now. Uh, so any, for anyone who's sort of new here, this is my BA Falcon wagon, which I sort of bought real cheap at one point as a means to an end, because I needed something that I could tow my drift car with. And it ended up being my daily for quite a long time. And it is, just was such an awesome car. It did everything so perfectly. So it was such a great car that I thought it deserved something. It deserves something more than just to be withered away into nothingness. So that's why I decided I was going to turn it into a project and put this barra and a turbo into my VS Commodore. So that's the plan. I'll go into it a bit more depth in another episode though. But yeah, got a little frog friend. Hello, Mr. Frog friend. Um, let's see, here she goes. So I've already disabled Pats with PCM tech and we are dead flat, like absolutely dead flat. All right, so, gonna need a jump start. Go on, Mr. Frog, you're not gonna like it. Whoa, mighty barra. So a little bit more about this, it's 2004 BA uh, wagon, just an aspirated, uh, petrol only. As you can see, you got the tow bar there. This thing towed my drift car around so, so many places, and it tows absolutely awesome. The thing just pulled like a freight train. It was one, honestly one of the best tow cars I've ever owned, and I've owned a lot of new four-wheel drives. I had a new PX Ranger when they first came out, had an MP300 Navara, and I could honestly say that this thing towed just as well. R literally, it towed just as well as any of those. Um, obviously it was not a fuel, as fuel efficient or anything else, it didn't have a lot of the creature comforts, but as far as just towing, the thing just performed so awesome. And I have so much respect for this thing from then. I bought it for $1,200, already had the 3.2, uh, the 2.3 ton tow bar on it. Um, I pretty much did nothing except for just service the thing. Uh, it's currently got 360,000 Ks on it. And yeah, absolute weapon of a car. So I thought rather than, uh, you know, unfortunately all good things come to an end and this just got to the point where it needed tires, it needed money spent on it. Uh, I couldn't afford to keep running it on petrol and need, the rego was due and I just decided to take it off the road, let the rego lapse, picked up a, a VS Commodore down there cheap and so the barra's going into that. So that's the plan, that's what's happening. So anyway, we'll get this started and get around the back and degrease it because there's nothing worse than trying to get out a motor that's all greasy and dirty and gross. And like most Fords, We've got a power steering leak, so there's power steering fluid everywhere. Big bad Pulsey to the rescue. Oh, alive, 370,000 Ks. Look at that. Woohoo! So 370,000 Ks should just have just enough wear on the rings that it should be right for as much boost as the valve springs will hold. It's still got all dirt from like, I took this thing to Land Cruiser Mountain Park and stuff, like, it's filthy under here. I tell you what though, I do really, really miss this car as a daily. It is so comfy and it was so convenient and handy. I just wish I could afford to keep running it. <laughs> I kind of want to buy another one. I kind of want to buy a Ute. They're just such good cars. They're so good. Anyway, at least it gets another lease on life in a different shell. There's nothing quite as satisfying as a really good engine degrease. You can see how much crap, like, I'm pretty sure I've got a real bad oil leak at the oil pressure sender for this thing, but I have a bit of a better look when I get it out. But anyway, the plan at the moment is to leave this thing bog stock, stock injectors, stock bale springs. It's gonna be a stock BTR. I figure those three working together, they all limit it at sort of a similar, like, you know, point. So if I went and put valve springs in it, well, then I need injectors. Or if I went and put injectors in it, well, then I need valve springs. And if I did those two, well, then I could push a little bit more power. I'd probably hurt the BTR. So you can see where I'm getting with that. It opens a can of worms. So my plan is to leave it completely stock. Just a four bar boost, uh, 
four bar base pressure like the XL6 turbos are and just send it with the KKR 660 and the VS. Hopefully, like it's not gonna be super big power, you know, maybe mid 300s, hopefully. I'll be happy with that, but it should still be a really fun little car. And as you guys all know, I'm sort of building it out of a lot of parts that I've got to try and make a little bit of money and keep the channel moving so we can keep the projects going. So, so the exhaust heat shield is actually missing because I stole it to make a heat shield for the R31 at Matsuri last year. So that never got replaced, you know, just so many good memories. Anyway guys, as a lot of you know, we're moderately new to Barra stuff. Uh, this is actually the first time I will have ever pulled a Barra out of a car, which I want to, you know, use everything out of. So it's going to be probably a little bit slower than we normally work uh, because I'm going to have to sort of really take my time, take note of everything, make mental notes for everything that's in there. But the plan is pretty much use everything out of this car, loom, ECU, engine, everything, all of this, all of this going in the VS. Probably even these fans, you know, as much as I can use, but it's gonna make it a good car. Alrighty, so we've got the box out and we're just about to get the motor out, but uh, I'm gonna leave that for tomorrow and call it a day there. But you know, at least it's started. What do you reckon, buddy? <laughs> Ford motor in a VS? Yeah, 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 yeah. He says, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, we'll pick this up in the morning. And we're back, guys. So back out here this morning, we've got a bit of a nicer day today. Kind of, there's a few black clouds around still though. Uh, one thing I did forget to talk about yesterday before I left though, is like doing most things new to me. I uh, sort of just went gun ho and went ape shit and just started undoing heaps of stuff. Um, only to realize a bit later on yesterday afternoon that 
I had made things way harder than they need to be and getting these things out is actually very, very simple, much like an LS, actually even easier. Thus far, this has been one of the nicest engines to, to work on to get out of a car in a long time, I'd say. So, you know, all I did is undo the plug off the PCM for the engine loom up there, it's similar to like an E38 uh, PCM where you've got one plug is for all the engine stuff and one plug goes to the body loom. So once you pull the engine loom plug off the PCM, the whole loom just comes with the motor, all one piece, super, super easy. Undo a few purge valve lines and stuff like that, and it's ready to come out. So um, I already half pretty much undid most of the loom that I could get at, so I really wish I hadn't done that. But anyway, you get that sometimes on the big jobs. The more you learn. So the next one, we're gonna be probably a lot quicker at it, but that was the whole thing about this thing is taking it slow, taking lots of mental notes and learning a lot. So this is ready to come out, apart from water and power steering, which we're about to attack. But first thing I'm gonna do is head down to the front and get myself a pallet so I've got somewhere to put this thing uh, once it comes out, because as you've seen in the shed around here, we are a little bit short of room. Anyway, it just means that once this is out and on a pallet, I've got to work real hard on getting it into the VS ASAP so that it's off the floor and out of our way. So we made jokes about this year being the year of the barra for us, considering we spent this long not really having done much of them, and all of a sudden we are going to be do, doing quite a few. So after the VS, we've got this thing to do for a customer, for my old boss, E46 BMW. So this E46 is getting a BF, Barra and ZF six speed. So that'd be an interesting little project. Um, and you know, as you guys know, after the VS, we've got other plans. I'll show you them in a minute, but. Wee -hoo. Actually after turboing Jake's 80 series the other week, I've sort of actually been hella keen to actually do something with the Deo here as well. You know, four JB ones are a pretty good little motor. And uh, I've actually found that you can actually buy like off the shelf two and a half inch exhaust setups for them. So I think about like intercooling this and putting a decent exhaust on it and turning it up a bit. Got heaps of stuff I'm keen for this year. See how the weather goes, Asavo. I might actually even drag the big girl up to the shed. I'm gonna need to pull this carpet out and give it a really good clean because this window's been broken for quite some time. So she have a fair bit of water in there at some points. So I have to pull it all out and give it a really, really good clean up. Get ourselves a pallet here. After this one, <laughs> the next sort of project that I want to do, uh, sort of a bit of a budget build again, to sort of capitalize and get some more money in for, is the EA over here, so nice patinaed EA. Leave it as it is pretty much, just do another absolute sleeper, barra swap. And then after that, got my AU ute down there, which I, that's where I sort of want to do like an actual proper big horsepower one. So hopefully with the money that I get from selling this one and then selling that one, I'll hopefully be able to build like a really good high power sort of barra sleeper out of the AU ute is my plan. Also for the 46 compact here, Old mate that owns the 46 that we're putting a barrier up there. I actually snagged the M50B20 out of that. So, start thinking about throwing that in the, in the compact and doing something with it, but I don't know. We're running out of time to do things. Needless to say though, guys, I am pretty keen for a lot of the plans we've got for this year. It's gonna be a really good year for us, I think. I've also been talking to another bloke for like probably six months. We've been planning, he wants to do a barra into his HQ wagon. I think it is a wagon. Um, so that's hopefully going ahead this year as well. So believe you me, if this Barra Holden makes you mad, you're gonna hate us when we shove one into a HQ. Anyway, here's our BTR. Now this thing, for the whole life that I had this wagon was absolutely flawless. It towed, I've never even serviced it the whole time I've had this car. And it's towed drift cars, it's towed very heavy cars, it towed another BA wagon up the range. And the thing just absolutely loved life, it was awesome. And I was sort of under the impression that this thing was all stock for the entirety that I had the car. I thought it was all stock, but this is a tail shaft that came out of it. And I'm not convinced that this is a stock item, like full alloy tail shaft. It could be, it could be stock. I've got another one down there. I could have a look at that and see, but it really, it doesn't seem like that would be a stock Ford wagon item to me. Um, the other good thing about it being a wagon is because it's already got a, a solid rear end, it's already got a slip yoke instead of just a donut. Uh, which is good. So I don't have to worry about that. VS is a solid front end for anyone who didn't already know, but yeah, it's a solid front end VS. Ah, solid rear end VS. So needed the slip yoke. So it's good that it's already had it. Now, a few other things that pointed to the fact that this thing may have been worked on or a bit aftermarket at some points, which I never even noticed because I never even bothered to look hard enough when I owned it, is that it's had a secondary trans cooler installed. So there is a aftermarket looking trans cooler on the front of the rad there. Um, so someone's obviously thought about the fact that they were going to be tying with a BTR before and have done the, the trans cooler there. Uh, not only that, but um, these things are renowned. It's not on the box, still hanging on the car. So 
These things are renowned. This is the selector linkage setup and they're renowned for this little joint thing breaking off and leaving you stranded. And someone has already actually drilled this out and bolted it. So I would assume that that's already happened to someone at some point or they did it maybe when they changed the gearbox or something. But it all points to this thing. Uh, you know, someone set it up pretty well uh, at some point for what they were going to use it for. Uh, hence probably why I never had an issue with it and it always was absolutely bulletproof for me and this BTR has been rock solid and I believe with what we want to do with the DS um, You know again leaving it that stock injectors stock barrel springs uh, We hopefully shouldn't hurt this BTR and it should all work out pretty well for us. So Anyway, Rex is just dropping the coolant. We just got to do power steering and then we can lift this thing out Righto guys, one empty hole and one barra pulled out of the mighty BA. So rest in peace, mighty BA, you've been an amazing vehicle. If you want to see my emotional departure and goodbye, uh, you can watch pretty much the, the first episode, I suppose, or the, the build release <laughs> that I did for this build. I'll put the link in the description, but anyway. Um, yeah, so obviously we needed a lot more cleaning up. It seems as though most of my oil leakage must be happening actually on the cover. Most of the coil pack holes are full of oil. Um, you know, there's obviously lots of oil, classic barra things, you know. Um, but I reckon probably an oil pressure sensor I might pull that out and just reseal it up. And I think I'll have to do probably like a, a new, um, new seal for the cover and maybe a new VCT uh, solenoid seals and stuff like that to try and seal this up a bit because it's what seems to be where all the oil is coming from in this thing. But anyway, I've got a bit of time to do that now. The important thing was to get this out of the car. Now starts the tedious job of pulling out everything else. So like I need my fly-by-wire pedal, I need my shifters to go with the BTR, I need the BCM, so I've got to pull out whatever loom I need for all that. Um, so what I'm thinking about doing, I'm half tempted to just go, go ham at it now and just try and get it all out. But I, th I feel like I should probably talk to someone, whoever I'm gonna to get to do my loom first. Same sort of deal with this as everything else, guys. As much as I would love to have a go at this loom myself, the same way we did sort of the cruiser and that, uh, it just, for someone like us who doesn't specialize in something like this, it takes really long for us to do it. We're at a point now where we are just too busy to be able to sit down and do it. As much as I would love the bragging rights and the glory to say that I, had, I did the loom as well as everything else on the car, uh, the fact is, it just ends up being cheaper for us to just send it to someone else. Even though we've got to pay to get the loom modified, it's less time, and for us, time is money, so. Um, I'm thinking about just sending it to someone to get the blue modified, so I feel like I should talk to them first, talk to them about exactly what they need from the car, um, and that way I have a bit more of an idea of what exactly I need to get out and what exactly I need to make sure isn't damaged uh, and stuff like that, so that's what I might do, but anyway. I'll uh, make a few phone calls, talk to a few people. Uh, so also, as you can see, we got away with getting everything out uh, without having to disconnect any of the AC system, it's all stayed intact. So I thought I'd leave that in there until I can get someone to come out who can properly back it out and um, 
then I can disconnect it because I will need the pump because you know the VS will have working AC and everything else. It's want to be. I want it to be a swap where everything sort of works. I'm not too worried about the dash cluster because I've got the power tune digital dash, but I do want all of the AC and everything else to to work. So I will need that pump, but I didn't want to release all the gas because the AC in this thing's still really cold, so it must be fully gassed up. So anyway, um, so I'm having chats with Sam at Whitey's there at the moment about uh, loom things and what we can do about it and what will be needed, etc. Um, and yeah, we'll work on getting some stuff out. We've got one barrel sort of cleaned up. Really hard to get like that many years of grime off it and grease and grossness, but cleaned it up as best I could. Um, and yeah, it's on the pallet. So had a chat to Sam there at Whitey's Wiring. He's gonna do my loom for me, which is awesome. Couldn't think of anyone better to do it. So he sort of just gave me a heads up exactly what we need. So while I was washing the motor, Rex started on that. So we pulled out the immediate bit of loom from the other plug for the PCM, which is here. So we send that down, I've got to pull out the pedal and do something similar, just cut the wires back from the pedal and I'll pull out the shifter and I assume we'll be sorting out the shifter because he reckons he doesn't need it. Also apparently the BTR is much like a 4L60 where the box is controlled by solenoids actually in the mechatronics inside the box uh, and everything's just um, controlled through the PCM, you, you don't particularly need the BCM apparently, even supposedly for the Tiptronic. Uh, you don't actually need the BCM. So that's good news. We don't need the BCM. So let's just pull this, the pedal out. We'll pull the shifter out. We'll send this down to Sam. He'll be able to send it back. all will sort it out with its own little fuse box and everything else. And we'll be right to go then. So that's awesome. Absolutely epic. So we've got the gearbox and chuck it on this pallet as well. And I can just sort of start going through doing what I've got to do with this. I'm going to have to get this exhaust manifold off uh, in room for our, make room for our new turbo manifold. Gonna have to sort something out with this reg. Um, I, was, I, I don't know if maybe I can just put another one in line because you know we're going to be bumping the fuel pressure up. So it should be able just to put an aftermarket one after the stock one and still just bump the fuel pressure up to four bar. That should work. So the NA barras have like butterflies in the intake manifolds as well. A lot of people know about this. This is vacuum sort of referenced and this controls a set of butterflies in the intake manifold. And the point of this is to uh, lower the cross-sectional area of the intake port under vacuum. So what that means is you get a higher velocity air charge, which fills the cylinders better at low, low load. So the idea of that is, you know, you get more torque at, uh, under vacuum and that sort of thing. Um, so that's the idea of the butterflies. When people tur turbo these, a lot of people pull them out. Uh, considering the fact that our turbo setup is going to be extremely mild, um, you know, very, very mild setup, I don't think it's going to be an issue for us. I'm just going to leave it in there as it is. So I don't even have a need to take this manifold off at all. So the intake manifold will just stay on. Exhaust manifold will come off, ready for our turbo one. Um, obviously mounts and stuff will get changed and I'll just, like I said, I'll try and sort out seals and stuff for the top, try and figure out what the leak is and try and just get that under control. I'll pull off the oil pressure sender. I'll re-goop that up and get it back in. And I'll probably do maybe a rear main seal as well. Just may as well do it while I can, while it's out. So I might do a rear main too. And that essentially will be probably all that I do to that motor before it goes into the Mighty VS. Hmm, so Rex is inside now, just working on inside the car. Now, as we already know, these Fords are pricks when it comes to interiors. So lucky for us, we don't particularly care about this thing. So we're happy to just break whatever we need to break to get it done. <laughs> Someone's already had a go at this. Hack cut through the oh, yeah. plastic. Pulled it out. We're not the first people to have a go. Have a go at it. Mmm. Little whore, eh? 
All right, so got most of the stuff out here for the most part, but uh, this pedal is what an absolute dog. So it's looking like we're gonna have to pull the entire dash out, column out, everything out to get the pedal out. Um, we've been battling with it for probably an hour and a half now, the two of us, trying to get just the pedal out, but there's no way you can get it. It's absolutely the worst design I've ever seen. It is fucking cooked. So classic Ford stuff. Up until this pedal, everything was relatively easy. It all came well away pretty well. That was good. It's just the design of how they house this pedal in the car is absolutely trash. And we're going to have to pull out the entire dash to get it, the pedal. Wouldn't recommend at all. Even got out my 6 by 9s You And all the money that I found. I'm rich now. <laughs> anyway, uh, seriously lost patience with this thing. So pretty much all the stuff is going to get broken out. A very solid 2 out of 10. This sucks. It's easily taken us longer now to get just this pedal out than it took to do everything else combined. Absolute. Prick. All right, so pretty much the worst fucking thing ever in the history of everything. What an absolute piece of shit. All because of the pin that goes through this. So what was the hardest part of your barrack conversion? Getting the freaking go pedal out of the damn donor car. So stupid. But anyway, we've got everything here. We've got shifter. That's the initial part of the body loom, which Sam needs to modify. This is the O2 plug, which is actually part of the body loom, not the engine loom, go figure, but I cut that out for Sam as well. We've got our go pedal with our initial, that's our go pedal loom. Um, I've got the sort of starter alternator loom there, which should be pretty easy. That's the overflow tank for in case I can actually make the barra um, radiator work. So if the barra radiator will fit in the rad support of the VS, I'm trying to use the barra radiator, everything out of the barra, even the condenser, uh, that way pretty much everything goes in as it was in this car um, and then I've only got to modify the manifolds to the firewall for the uh, VS and Should be on our way for aircon and everything else. So if it works that way, that's awesome If not, we we'll just have to use the VS stuff. It's still in the car, which is awesome. That's a good head start um, Because there's no motor in there, but that stuff is so that's a good head start for that and we we'll just have to adapt with um, You know rad, rad hoses and stuff like that so it's just a matter of whatever's going to work, whatever's going to fit, we'll find out. But that's my plan at the moment is to go that way if it fits. So send this stuff off to Sam. Hopefully get that back fairly soon. Anyway, apart from having to get that pedal out, that was actually not too bad of an experience. That was just the worst thing of the whole process. It sucked ass. Anyway, I'm going to get the bonnet back on this thing, push it back outside. We're still going to keep it up here for now until we've done the conversion, just in case we need anything else. Oh, that's the other thing we've got in that stuff is the OBD. So got the OBD plug out of the car, so Sam can put that in as well. So Sam's going to modify that loom, use his own fuse box and do all that sort of thing. So I'd say he'll probably just put the OBD in the fuse box. I'd be happy with that. All right, so we've got a hell pallet of barra conversion here. Very good, very good. So, nice to get the jump on this little project a little bit earlier than I expected. Uh, for a lot of you who have been watching, what happened is uh, the operation that my missus was meant to get during the week ended up getting postponed again. So Queensland Health have postponed that one more time. Standard. Anyway, so I had actually not planned to be here at all this weekend. From, you know, Wednesday through till the end of the day, which is Sunday, I had planned to be down the coast with her. So uh, it was good to get this little bit of a jump on this project. I wasn't expecting to be able to get this weekend in to get it done. Uh, so that's awesome. So I have actually, if you can see the last four blocks there, I've actually booked out the last two weekends of the month for this job as well. And pending what's going on this weekend coming with COVID as far as the Archer Field Matsuri, we may have this weekend as well. So potentially have the next three weekends to get this thing sorted, which is really exciting um, because it means potentially we could actually even maybe work towards a, a deadline of uh, power play in February. So that's, I think the 13th of February is power play. So it would be awesome to have this thing at power play. That would be awesome. Um, particularly, you know, get it out, have a bit of fun with it at power play and then have it for sale. That would be ideal because that way I get to enjoy it a little bit. We get to smash it out real quick and uh, hopefully we get a return on this investment really, really soon. So up in the corner there, I didn't show you this episode, but up in the corner there is my complete barrack conversion from tough mounts as well. It like, includes a sway bar. 
So everything's here to do it. Once Sam has his way with this loom, got to get the uh, the tail shaft there. Should get away because it's already a slope, slip yoke like I was talking about. We should be able to get that down to far of shafting and just get it shortened. That should be sweet. Um, you know, being that it's uh, also a borgy solid rear end in the VS, I'd assume that the snouts will actually be the same. So that, that uni should actually work on the snout um, of the diff. So yeah, it should just be a matter of getting that thing shortened. Still got to sort out a true track or something for the diff, but happy to sort that out. Uh, and yeah, so hopefully next weekend we can drag the actual car up here and start getting stuck into the VS side of things. Uh, and yeah, see where we go from there. So very exciting, very excited. Thanks for watching, as always. Smash like, smash subscribe. It's the other thing I probably should point out as well is I know that this swap is not uncommon. I know it's been done quite a few times. Project Nomang, uh, a few other blokes like that. It's, it's not new to the world, this swap. But to this date, I haven't been able to watch any of those builds. So honestly, I don't know much about this swap and what I'm doing. That's why I was talking before about maybe fitting the radiator, maybe not, because I don't actually know. I haven't researched enough to, to know about that yet. So um, unfortunately, I'm a bit strapped for time most of the time. So it's just... Uh, learn as I go and see what we end up with. So I know it's not new. It's new to me though, and I haven't looked into how to do this build properly. So we'll see how we go. But anyway, hopefully see you on the next one. Peace out. See you, bye.